Hey everyone, I've been spending a lot of time this week talking to soldiers from different countries as research for future videos. So I'm going to talk a little bit about it, but keep it real casual so it doesn't take too long to make. In my research of mechanized or armored infantry units, once you get past all of the personal weapons, I think some of the most interesting differences are in the command and control relationships. You can kind of guess that squad leaders take orders from platoon leaders. But once you throw very capable vehicles in there, armies take different approaches. Who controls the vehicles? Who controls the dismounts? Are there dedicated leaders for each? And which is more important? It's kind of a nerdy debate, but we're all nerds here. To illustrate this, we're going to look at three nations that operate variants of the CV-90. Sweden, Denmark, and the Netherlands. And how they handle leadership positions in armored infantry platoons differently. I'm also going to throw the US mech platoon at the end as sort of a benchmark. First, the basics. Denmark and the Netherlands both operate variants of the CV-90-35, which is distinctive for its 35mm autocannon. Sweden, the originator of the platform, operates the CV-90-40 with a 40mm autocannon. The former two operate four vehicle platoons while Sweden, keeping with its Cold War practice, runs three vehicle platoons. Starting with Sweden, since I've already made a video about it, they have an aggressive, fight-mounted mindset that in some ways sacrifices the dismounted element a little bit. The platoon's leadership includes the platoon leader, deputy platoon leader, and a close combat leader. The close combat leader is an NCO, sometimes just a squad leader who can take command of the three infantry squads on the ground so the platoon leader doesn't have to dismount. This implies closer control of the mounted element, although in some cases the platoon leader will have a spare vehicle commander to take their spot should they choose to dismount. This is ultimately dependent on how complex the dismounted element's task is. Meanwhile, Denmark takes a more British-style approach. They have three squads like the Swedes, but both the platoon leader and deputy platoon leader dismount to lead. The platoon has a dedicated mounted commander called a platoon sergeant, who leads the vehicles on the dismount. The British do the same thing, with a platoon sergeant dismounting and a warrior sergeant of the same rank taking command of the warrior IFVs. And then there's the Dutch, who wanted to have the best of both worlds. What sets the Dutch apart are the two full sets of dismounted and mounted leadership. The newer officers come in as dismounted platoon leaders, callsign Romeo 2, assisted by a dismounted deputy, callsign Echo 2. Their mounted counterparts are generally more experienced and lead the vehicles and maintain oversight over the whole platoon. The overall platoon leader, callsign Romeo, will have been a dismounted platoon leader first. Compare this to an American mechanized infantry platoon mounted on the Bradley Fighting Vehicle. They have three squads, but they don't limit themselves to the space of the vehicle. Doctrinally, if the platoon is at full strength, squads would be cross-loaded in different vehicles and require reorganization on the dismount. The platoon leader commands a vehicle in the generic example, but on the dismount, there is meant to be some seat switching between the gunner, a backup gunner, and the PL to take over leadership. The platoon sergeant in this case would gain control over the mounted element. As a comparison, this is essentially the French method as well with their IFVs. They got three infantry squads and an ATGM and MG support squad but the platoon leader will normally dismount, leaving their vehicle's gunner in control of that specific vehicle, while the deputy platoon leader, who's a chief sergeant, takes over command of the vehicles. So we can see here that even though all of these countries use the same vehicles and put six guys in the back, the nature of their platoons are different. Let me know what you think of these mini-episodes, and I'll see you in the next one.